All right. Hey, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Soap Living Room. As you can see, well, it is like a new setup, a new living room, but the same old great content that we're going to come out tonight and the same faces, beautiful, handsome faces that is behind the scene. All right. So a warm welcome to everyone who, who is tuning in right now and waiting for the broadcast. Uh, this is Sok Living Room. This is uh, we are we are part of Sokobliti Church, and you know Sok Living Room is a place where we call it like a table talk, where we come together, we gather around, and then we we we, we kind of share around a topic. And for those of you who have been following us, this month topic is called Living Out Sonship, and we already had two very powerful and amazing session the past two weeks. So if you have missed you know any one of those two session or you want to kind of like catch up, you know review it. Uh, feel free to jump into our uh, YouTube channel. That's one way uh, that you can, uh, you know, everything's archived there. Or you can go to our Facebook page and just need to slowly uh, scroll down and find uh, kind of like uh, where's the video for the past two weeks. All right. So, well, you know, without further ado, I, I do want to, you know, uh, introduce uh, my two amazing colleagues that I got to work alongside with to, you know, to really build God's kingdom, to do soak living room and to have fun. And you know, um, we're gonna first introduce someone, someone that loves potato chips. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, it's true. Someone that loves potato chips, you know, and and he he loves to make potato chips move across the table. <laughs> well, Pastor Jeff would, would share more about story later on. <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyway, you know, uh, I want to uh, warmly welcome Pastor Patrick. Pastor Rashid, would you like to say hi to our online audience? <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Uh, I think all of us in this room like potato chips. <laughs> <laughs> Some more than others. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, um, this is a uh, soaked living room. Yeah, well, um, and we, <laughs> yeah, it's a different room. But the same three people, same three sons. <laughs> uh, and uh, well, this this month we are on this uh, this uh, topic of sonship, all right? Living out sonship, and uh, yeah, and and I'm I'm just uh, I, yeah, even as a past pastor. Um, <laughs> Jeff said that this uh talked about the parable that oh in in the parable there's not just two sons there are actually three sons I just realized we got three sons down here <laughs> <laughs> wow no no which is which <laughs> ah. who, is, who is the law based son <laughs> uh, who is the law abiding son <laughs> Who do you think who is who? No, I, I I think every one of us, right? We have some aspects of the elder son and some aspects of the younger son in us. Yeah, mm -hmm. some aspects of us that is prodigal in nature. Some aspect of us that is a uh, very uh, uh self righteous and and religious and uh in, in nature yep so uh yeah so every one of us have 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 a different mix and and it can shift and change but um of course what what we want to uh do is really to set set our eyes on on the model <laughs> that is um Jesus the perfect son right well, uh, <laughs> all right. So, 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 Clement. Huh? Yes. What do you think? What What do I think? Well, I think it is time to uh, introduce our third <laughs> guest, <laughs> our important third guest. You know, uh, he is our you know the the founder of Sokobliti Church. You know, the, the one that uh, really, you know, someone that I really respect a lot. And, uh, you know, wh one thing I, I, I find is very important is that there's a difference between a s wh when a son is leading, 
when a son is a leader. You know, when someone, when a, when a leader is secure in identity and, and, and know what sonship looks like, you know, um, it is, it's, it's a great leader to follow. And, you know, Jeff is someone that, that knows what his identity is, you know, and, and, and his inheritance in, in Christ. You know, and I, I think it's someone that I really uh, admire. So, you know, Pastor Jeff, we'd like to, uh, you know, say hi to our online audience. Uh, thank you so much for the kind words. Uh, uh, hi, everyone. Uh, uh, it's, uh, I, I don't know whether you guys prefer the old setup or the new setup. This looks more homely, I think. Uh, but, yeah, um, yes, it's an extremely huge topic. And... Uh, So uh, it's essential that uh, I, I don't know how much we can cover, but uh, this is such a huge thing when it comes to sonship and orphan spirit and all that stuff. Right? I mean, we, we hear phrases and words go around like orphan spirit, and uh, very often at times we don't understand what it is. Uh, and um, But tonight we're going to dive into, we're going to talk about the elder brother. Yeah? Last week we talked about the younger brother and how how he returns and stuff and and but we talked a lot about that before, but uh and we we spent quite a lot of time talking about them meeting outside of town. We talk about them why the father is waiting for him. We talk about that uh, a lot of that aspect of the prodigal, but uh now we're going to talk about the guy who thinks he's a prodigy, <laughs> yeah, the the eldest son. And and to be fair, to be fair, uh, we need to talk about both, because the the parable ends with the elder son, not the the the, the parable doesn't end with the parable uh, uh, prodigal son. The, el- the 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 parable ends with the elder son. So there's something that is very important that, uh, and, and it's like if you read the Bible, if you gotta know your beginning and your end, correct? Yeah, beginning there's a garden, in the end there's a city. The in the beginning is the garden of God, in the end is the city of God. So it began with two one tree uh in the garden and it becomes many trees of life uh in the city. So so in the beginning and the end, uh we we, we are victorious at the end. And any time you get the end wrong, uh you have a very bad eschatology. So uh and also for this parable, uh and we also need to understand that it's the ending is something that we didn't talk about because the highlight for this parable is usually with uh, either the prodigal son or the, the generous father. But we seldom talk about the elder brother. But the, the true matter of the fact is the truth is it ended with the elder brother. Yeah? It ended with the actions of the elder brother. And so there's something that Jesus is trying to tell his audience who is predominantly at the moment listening, a lot of them are religious Jews. So we're going to kind of slowly shift gear uh, into the elder brother tonight. Yeah? So, um, Patrick? Yeah. Um, well, um, when, I, when I look at um, the younger brother and the elder brother, I, well, I, I realize I have two you know two aspects of them in me and in fact um i realized that uh yeah sometimes uh for for a lot of people i i, I realized uh, for a lot of people uh in different seasons of their life you know uh, uh sometimes they they might reflect they might uh be living out more like the younger brother. Some sometimes they are, they might be living out more like the elder brother, and it's very ironic because I I see a lot of people when uh, before they got saved and and went to church. Uh, I I've seen a number of people who were living uh, lives that were very, um, for lack of a better word. Uh, very uh, decadent or free flow, and then they got saved, and then they start going to church, and then they start uh, getting to know the word, 
and then they start getting very zealous uh, in, in the things of God. And then after a while, they look at other people who are out of church and then they say, oh, this, this is bad. This guy is living a bad life. This guy is a sinner. No, this, this is not right. That's not right. And, and then I, I see basically people who, who, who basically promoted from younger brother to older, older brother. I, I, don't, I don't know what, uh, maybe promotion is a bad word. All right? Moth. <laughs> Shift. Shift. Right? It's just, yeah. Uh, promotion is the wrong word. Uh, yeah, shift or morph from from the mentality of a younger brother to an older brother. Yeah. Uh, from lawless to law based. Good one. But whether you are in, <laughs> either way, right? It's it's an extreme. Uh, one that. That, that totally is, that is ignorant of the law, one that despises the law, one that, that n- neglects the law, and the other one, uh, it, it, is, uh, it, it is so focused on the law that there is no grace. And... And, and and the thing is both are extremes. And a lot of times we are unable to be gracious towards others. Uh because we are because we are so focused on on the law and even if we talk about about the grace of God is at a very intellectual, theological level. And, and even with people talking about grace all the time, uh, it can be at a very intellectual, theological level. And, and graciousness does not flow out of their lives. That's 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 when this person becomes an elder elder brother, and and it's not about how how many times you talk about grace, or how often you talk about grace on your mouth. Because I've seen people who talk about grace all the time. With, uh, but, uh, not being gracious at all in their hearts and and in 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 their ways towards people. And and I have to repent of that as well because there there are certain areas of my life where I find that I am not that gracious. That I I am gracious towards certain people, and I'm compassionate towards certain people, but with s- s- other people with. Uh, Certain situations, I have very little grace. I have very little grace for certain kinds of uh, mistakes. I have very little grace for certain kinds of, uh, of, of behavior or nonsense. And, and that does not reflect the heart of the Father. And so there is an elder brother in me that I have to deal with, that I, 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 have, to, I, have, to, I have to come before God and, and, and really ask, God, why am I acting like this? And the fact is, you know, a lot of times where I, I'm not gracious, I'm uh, I'm not tolerant of mistakes. That is, f- that is, f- uh, in, is from a context that I'm a pastor, in, in a context as a shepherd, and 
And that's serious. I need to ask myself, as a shepherd or as a pastor, why, when it comes to certain things, why can I not extend grace? Why do I not carry your heart in, in, in certain areas of my life, in certain areas of ministry, in certain scenarios, in certain situations, towards certain people? And if I were to really... Uh, really continue to explore that with God, it is it's really that there are certain parts of my heart that is still deeply wounded, deeply hurt, acting as triggers that cause me to react mindlessly it will <laughs> and i i i i have to just uncover that right and and so the fact is we are all very very complex creatures <laughs> yeah, i am a very very complex creature right and 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 so the question I, I, I ask my, myself is, in which areas of my life am I modeling the perfect son Jesus? In which areas of my life uh, 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 am I acting like a prodigal son? In which areas of my life am I acting like the elder son with, 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 with so, so self-righteous? And then how can I surrender these areas of my life? where I'm acting as an elder son and to, to re receive uh, healing and renewal of mind so I can react and act differently. What, and what, what are these areas of my life where I'm, I, I'm living and reacting as a prodigal son where I can surrender, repent, and receive healing for, for my mind to be renewed so I can react and act differently and, and and that's that's something that I have to grapple with and I think that's something that each of us uh, have to go to God and and explore it's really about knowing yourself better in God's presence allowing him to speak to your life to review uh, your present state and and how you can you, you can allow the parts of, of you that are unhealed to be healed that are unrenewed to be renewed and, and, and so that you that that you can be transformed to his likeness to carry the heart and mind of Christ. All right. Wow. Patrick, I, I love how you started by talking about, you know, how um, the younger brother can, can, you know, change. And I, I feel like that's a very real thing because I've seen people, you know, like you say, you know, they, they might live a very dec decadent life or maybe for some it will be a very extreme of, you know, a very sinful lifestyle. And when they got saved, they, they, they actually really, you know, receive, you know, God's grace, God's love. And they really changed, you know. They started, uh, you know, attending church. They started get, being transformed from the inside out through the Word, through the power of the Holy Spirit. But somehow along the way, you know, then they, they kind of become that elder brother when they see people, oh, why did that person deserve this? Why should we help that person? Why did God bless a person? You know, and, and I feel like the, the elder brother, symptom, I love how you put it that way, like, all of us have maybe some parts of those, you know. And at the same time, you talk about yeah, uh, we are all very complex creatures, you know. But Patrick, you might be complex, but I know the way to that to your stomach. <laughs> 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 you like acai bowl? That's not very complex. When there's good food, 
I can make you happy. <laughs> but anyway, back back to the the main topic. You see, I feel like if you go back to the whole story of the prodigal um, son, you know, and we are now focusing on like the the uh, elder brother. You see, one of the things the elder brother did was what I call, you know, that he couldn't celebrate, and he couldn't celebrate because he started by comparing. He started by comparing, you know. And we need to know that the kingdom of God, one of the culture is actually celebrating. You know, celebrating. When someone got healed, our first thing is like, wow, praise the Lord. Somebody just got healed. When someone got saved, we'd be like, praise the Lord. Someone got saved. You know, I, I, I put it in this way. You know, um, the kingdom of God is this. We're all on the same team. If you, you know, uh, watch uh, a soccer match, you know, usually you have, you only support one team, you know, in every soccer match, there's only two teams, right? Two, for example, you know, maybe you watch World Cup and maybe there's Brazil and England. You, you probably will have to su- support only one, right? And you cheer for your team when someone scores a goal. And, and most of the time, you, you, you're not, it doesn't matter who scored a goal. What really matters is at the end of the game, did your team win? And I feel like that, that should be the mindset of us being sons and daughters in the kingdom of God. It shouldn't matter who is the one got someone safe, someone healed, preaching, prophetic word, etc. We should celebrate. You know? And, and this is something that I, I, I struggle with, actually. You know? Uh, I feel that uh, I remember when I was in ministry school, you know, and I tell you, ministry school, that when I was in BSM, there's like a thousand of students. <laughs> You know, you are just one of the thousands of students, you know. And, and one of the culture that BSSM does is like, they love to celebrate testimony. And sometimes in school, you know, that we, they will ask students, anyone has a testimony to come up to share? And, and of course, you know, sometimes people love it. Wow, I get to stand in front of the whole school to, to share a testimony, to talk about Jesus on the mic, you know. And, and some people really love it, you know? And, and, and for me, I was like, oh man, I don't have a testimony. I don't have a testimony. And, and I was thinking like, am I any lesser if I don't have the testimony to share? Am I not supernatural if I don't have a supernatural testimony to share? You know, and, and these are the things that, that, I, that, bat, that batters in my thoughts when, when I was in first year because I feel kind of left out I feel small, you know, or in another way, I feel insecure because I see there are like people going up the station. Wow, you know, last night we went to this Friday night strike. We went to, you know, this place and someone got saved and the back got healed. And we're like, wow, that's amazing. And another person come, we did treasure hunt. We found this person. Like, wow, I was in healing. And I'm like, wow, my weekend is very boring. <laughs> I was at, at home doing homework. You know, and, and, and they are out, you know, getting people saved, getting people healed. And, and I started to feel small, you know. And the Lord started to speak to me. And he said, Clement, you have to learn how to celebrate. Because if I don't learn how to celebrate, what I will start to do is I will start to compare. And you need to know, when, when comparison will lead to something called competition. Competition don't just start like that one, you know. Competition always start by comparing. If I compare myself with Patrick, wow, Patrick, no, no, no more Greek word and Hebrew word than me. Wow, if I start to compare and I start to see that Patrick has more strong points than me, then what essentially happening is like, I put Patrick not as my brother, not as someone in my family, but I put him as a competitor, someone that I need to beat, someone I need to you know, surpass, someone I need to you know, struggle and strive with, you know? And, and that, that was a journey I, to, I, I was walking through in my first year of ministry school that I have to learn to celebrate. You know, because the thing is, if I don't be comfortable with who I am and celebrate, what will happen is I will have to make a testimony happen. Because I don't have testimony and I'm insecure about not having a testimony and I cannot celebrate what my other fellow student has achieved. Then what happened is, it's so easy that I start to go out to find someone to heal, to find someone to get saved. And even though they get healed, even though they get saved, it is out of the wrong motive and the wrong heart. 
it, it, it wasn't out of love that I really want to see someone get healed. It wasn't out of love that I want to see someone get saved. It was out of jealousy. It was out of competition that I need to prove to other people that I can get someone saved, I can get someone healed too. And, and that, that, that is what happened in, in the pro, pro, prodigal uh, son story where what's happened to the elder brother. The elder brother started to compare. He started to say like, how come he has this? How come he has a suckling pig? <laughs> How come there's a party for him? How come you are so happy to see him with all the robe and all the sinner ring, all this? He started to compare. You know? But interesting that the, the father said this like, son, you already have all access to all this. You already have access to all this. You know? And so... The, the elder brother start to compare and what ended up happening is this almost a like bitterness. How come my younger brother has all this which also become a competition? Then he stopped seeing his younger brother as a younger brother but he started to see his younger brother as a competitor that's competing with him for his father's attention. And that is very important. It's because if we are not secure as a son, what will happen is we start to see the fellow people around us that start to do great things for the kingdom of God. We don't see them as brother and sister. We don't see them as sons and daughters. We don't see them as family. But we start to see them as a competitor. And when that happens, we will not be able to celebrate their breakthrough. We will not be able to celebrate their success. And what we're going to do is we want to cancel them. We want to cancel them. We want to get them out of the picture. We think they are stealing our limelight. We think they're stealing our spotlight, our platform. We think they are stealing our attention from the Father. You know, last week I said this, if we truly understand that God's attention is always on us, we will never need to fight for His attention. And what that means is when we are so secure that God's eyes, God's hand is always on us, that His heart is beating towards us, that His eyes is always on us, then we know when, when we don't have to fight for attention because that's what the elder brother is essentially also doing because he sees his younger brother, he started to compare, and he sees him like, you are my competitor. You're taking away things that I should have, things that I should deserve. You're taking also always my father's attention. And you're now no longer my brother. You are like my competitor, my enemy. You know, and and I feel like that 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 is that is the elder brother attitude and heart. And we have to really watch our heart. We have really have to guard our heart. That if we don't adopt and live and walk in what a celebration culture looks like, we will fall into the elder brother symptoms. Because a son and a daughter, you know, I love what Patrick said in the first week. A mature son and daughter, you know, who yours? When we are mature already, we actually learn to celebrate our fellow brother and sister. We'll be like, wow, Patrick, that's an amazing message. That's really an amazing message. Wow, Pastor Jeff, wow, I really love that that healing, you know, that story. That was so amazing. That was so inspiring. That I can be so open and willing to, to celebrate because it's like, wow, they are really doing a great job. And, and their testimony... Is because we're at the same team, right? They score a goal for kingdom of God, for Jesus, team Jesus. And I want to celebrate. I want I, I, I cannot be like, wow, Patrick saw a goal. What Lao way? Why Patrick saw a goal? No, no, no. I'll be like, wow, Patrick saw a goal. That is amazing. We are team Jesus. We celebrate. You know? So we we really need to leave out and walk out as sons and daughters to walk out this celebration culture. That that when we see any, you know, prodigal sons or daughter coming, we're gonna celebrate. We're going to celebrate because when we celebrate, we are embracing them. When we celebrate, we, 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 are, we are exalting them. You can only celebrate when you walk in humility because celebrating someone means this. You're putting someone in the spotlight and you take the back seat. See, if I want to celebrate Jeff, if I want to honor Jeff, I'm actually taking the back seat. I'm telling the world like, guys, listen, look at Pastor Jeff. Look at, look at this amazing testimony. I'm honoring him for something he has accomplished. So all the spotlight, you know, all the attention goes to him. It's not to me. I take a back seat. So, so if we cannot take a back seat and celebrate and honor, you know, maybe we have a pride issue. <laughs> because we either walk in humility or walk in pride. 
you know? And, and, and one last thing before, you know, I pass to uh, Jeff to continue is, is this. You see, I, I, I think in church, we really, when we really know God's heart is to celebrate, then we will stop trying to get people out of the picture. Maybe, you know, in, in society, we talk about cancer culture, right? Wow, I don't like what you say. I don't like what you post. I don't like what you did. And then we are going to cancel you. And, and what it means is that we're going, to, we're going to eliminate you from the face of social media. <laughs> we're going to eliminate you from any point of influence. We're going to make you like a nobody. We're going to remove you. We're going to make you void. You know, and, and that, that's a cancer culture, you know. And sometimes we, instead of celebrating people, we cancel people by silencing their voice. Like, wow, that person got people safe again. Never mind. Let's not pass the mic to him to share. Let's not pass the mic to him to share the testimony. That's actually cancelling the person. Because we are insecure that someone has something good to share and you have nothing good to share. And we, are, we, we start to panic. It's like, oh no. You know, it, become the, it, come, it, it, it start to become like how, how Saul, the, the, the beginning of uh, the fall of King Saul. You know? Like Saul slay a thousand, but David slay a ten thousand. And, and he started to panic. Oh no, people start to pay more attention to David because David got 10,000, only got 1,000. You know, and, 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 and that's, 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 that, that, that's a comparison and we will start to cancel people. But, but I just want to encourage people, you know, we are a body of Christ. We're not supposed to cancel. And one of, the, one of the things that we do right now is as we cancel people in the body of Christ, what we're essentially doing is we're, we're doing a body amputation in the body of Christ. We're saying that, hey, you are the hand. I don't need your testimony. I'm going to cut you away. You are the leg. I don't need that, that miracle story. I'm going to cut you away. And, and, and we know we need one another. And, and sometimes spiritual amputation happen in the body of Christ. It's, it's, it's not because of misunderstanding. It is actually because of insecurity. It is because that we, 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 we are maybe jealous. You know? we, we cannot celebrate people. You know? So I just really want to encourage, you know, like, what does it look like for us to work out a culture of celebration that we can freely give praises, honor, and spotlight to someone and we're willing to take the back seat and give them that, that platform for that moment? Because I believe our Father in Heaven is also celebrating. The angels are also celebrating. And if we are not the only one celebrating, we're the odd one out. <laughs> we're already odd one out. The whole of heaven is celebrating over someone's success, but we're there being really bitter, being really upset. Why did God never use me to raise the day? Why did God never use me to heal that person? You know, when we start asking all these questions, like why, why, why? Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. All right, so, so uh, Pastor Jeff? Um, yeah. Um, so, the younger brother understand grace. At least. The younger brother understand what was given to him. Yeah. The but the elder brother didn't understand what was given to him. The younger but of course the younger brother understood what was given to him by grace. But his mindset is I can use the father what the father can do for me, right? The, the younger brother understand grace, but never understood God's, the father's heart for him. The elder brother never understood grace, neither does he understand uh, what was given to him. Yeah? And uh, in, in both cases, um, wow, well this is um see uh when we talk about sonship right uh we need to understand that we are talking about mature sons and daughters who are able to reign in power able to demonstrate the kingdom uh when you need to understand that, that the book of hebrews says that uh, the law is like a tutor it comes to train a child discipline a child so what a tutor does is he disciplines the child when he's doing wrong, uh, reward the child when he's doing right. That's technically what the law is. It is not the means to an end for a relationship. It was there as a tutor. Yeah? 
But the new covenant, we come into this place where we are fully revealed as sons and daughters. And it would seem that Jesus is saying, like, well, 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 uh, as the Father has sent me, I sent you. And all power and authority has given to me, therefore I give to you, therefore go. So I- in that, right, we move from... Um, we move from being under a tutor to moving into actual sons and daughters of God who will take the family inheritance out. Uh, and now, let, let me say this. I, I think one of the reasons why we have a lot of Christians who, who uh, are doing nothing and their life is they are they never understood authority, and they are they. Uh, it's, it's because they are. St- they are uh, now, in the wilderness, the father feeds you. The father takes care of you. Cloud by day, fire by night. Manna, uh, manna comes, and then in the morning they take right. So, and they 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 just need anticipation. Yeah, in the w- in the wilderness, all they d- they do is expectation and anticipation, because the Lord told them that uh, okay, you wake up in the morning, yeah, you just go out and there's food, right? There's food. So uh, all they need to do is anticipation and expectation. That's it. Just anticipate. They just wait. Bam, things happen. So in the wilderness is really this stage where God feeds his children. Right? The father feeds his children, take care of them, cloud by day, fire by night, you know, feed them, sayang them, love them. Uh and, and that is okay for a season. That is okay for a season. But when you cross into the promised land, uh and you need to understand jo- G- uh, Joshua and Jesus is uh, like you, you know, understand right? Jo- Joshua is Jesus, yeah, uh, and it, it's a it's a it's an example. It, it, it is a uh, it is a picture of Jesus. So when they cross into the promised land, now you need to understand that immediately when they cross into the promised land, they d- uh, that the Lord like you know it 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 come to a point where the provision actually has changed into inheritance. What do I mean by that? It means that they actually need to go out and look for food themselves. And when they taste the fruit, that's the day when the manna stops. That means the days of baby sitting, the days of spoon feeding is over. That means God is saying, I'm still going to provide to you. I'm still gonna p- my provision will still be on you, but I'm not going to provide to you. I'm going to provide through you. That's a huge difference there. And so, if you are still on this mentality where you're going to cross in the promised land, you just wait, the next day you sleep, wake up, you go out, no manna, go back in, sleep, wake up. Well. By the end of the 10 days, you'll die of salvation because that season has changed. That, that there's a switch from God, from, from God saying, well, uh, you there is one season that you kind of dwell in anticipation. In the in the wilderness, it's just anticipation. Wake up in the morning, bam, things happen. I just go, I anticipate. But in in the in in the, the promise, then he is not waiting for an. Anti- you're not going to survive on anticipation. You're you're going to survive on participation. That means that it, I want you to play a part in taking the inheritance. Now, if you still behave like a baby when you are in a promise, then it ain't going to work because the season has changed. And and a lot of us we 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 born again for 10, 20, 30 years. We we sometimes uh, you see age and maturity in Christ doesn't grow together. Doesn't mean you're a twenty year old Christian you're mature. Because I know of twenty year old they are still wanted the pastor to spoon feed them, but pastor never visit me. The pastor never do that. The pastor never shake my hand. And all like like I mean really, really I thought you were going to to church for Jesus like for your pastor or Jesus and and so we have a lot of adults uh, who are 20 30 over years old Christians but they are still in a baby mode where they want to be spoon fed not realizing that you know 
uh, to be fully mature, right? To be fully mature is when you are sons and daughters, when you are who sons and daughters of God, fully coming into inheritance, fully understand. And it will seem that Jesus is saying that all power and authority has been given to me, so therefore go heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead preach the gospel of the kingdom. So then there is a transition that is happening and there's a transference of God's inheritance over every single believer. And it's uh, for us leaders right now, right? It, you cannot measure your your effectiveness based on your influence over your sheep because there every it doesn't matter how big your church is, all of us have small church now. It, I don't care whether your church has 20,000 people, 30,000 people. Technically, all of us now, by default, is a small church. So if you still think that leadership is measuring your influence over them, uh, that is wrong. It, but uh, it, the, the unit of measurement is wha- uh, not influence, but impact. That if they can live their life as sons and daughters to impact the world, if they can live out their life as sons and daughters to impact the world, it's not how much influence I have over them. Because you can't see influence now. You can see influence on Facebook right now. Maybe I have 54 people. Wow, this will be very, very little people. Huh? Yeah. 54 people. Like, Is that what measurement of influence is? No. And, and, and a true leader will train out, a son will train out other sons. Yeah? And... And it's okay because all of us grow as child of God where we need attention and all the stuff. But seriously, if you are 20 years old and if you are 20 years old as a Christian, 30 years old, you ought to take the kingdom for God. You ought to somehow get out and uh, pro- allow God to demonstrate His power through you, not just to you. And, and that's one of the reasons why we you have so much people that is like kind of falling away because we never taught them how to impact the world. We never taught them that what it's really like to be a f- to be a son to inherit. And the th- problem with the elder son is that they are he's trying to work for wages where the father is telling him it's an inheritance. And that's a huge difference there. Because the 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 you miracle signs and wonders you cannot get by works. It's called grace gift or charismata for a reason. It's by grace. And so the sooner you realize the, uh, uh, that you will end up stopping, stop trying to get people healed, rather than allowing God to work through you to get people healed. You know and. And the problem with the elder son is that he didn't understood. He was on this wage mentality that he's working salary, right? Like working for inheritance. You, you see, it is so strange that the statement, I'm trying to work for inheritance. There's an oxymoron there because you can't work for inheritance. Someone needs to die and they give you the inheritance. Or someone needs to give you whatever they have in a will. See, this is this same goes to every spiritual gift. All power and authority it is not based on works. It's based on grace. It's based on whatever the Father has given. And don't mistake for those of us who move in signs and wonders and power, who can know how to prophesy and all that stuff. None of us will be able to do it if it wasn't for the grace of God. That we can't do it enough for the Father to love us more. We can't. So, therefore, Jesus on the cross eliminate all works. Okay, maybe let me change the word works. Eliminate every performance mentality so that you think that God can p- uh, you can please God. Eliminate every single works that all of us. The good thing about the prodigal son, the the parable is your bad deeds is not going to send you to hell. The opposite is true. Your good deeds cannot send you to heaven. It's a double-edged sword. You need to see the that the the the, the, the that parable is a double-edged sword. That your sin is it will not be able to draw you away from the love of God. Yeah, neither can your good works be able to draw you nearer to the love of God. 
It's a double-edged sword. We cannot just see it as one agent. That parable is a double-edged sword. That it destroys every performance mentality to think that we can make God, we can make God love us more. That is the the main objective. That the father says, "Son, what I have is yours." Like, what? I'm trying to work for inheritance. No, you're trying to work. If you are trying to work. Is, and you get something. It's called salary. You have off days. You have you have performance charts. You have KPI. That's what working under bosses. Yeah, and and that sometimes is our mindset, isn't it? We have actually our own KPI. We didn't pray enough. We pray. We didn't pray half hour enough. Uh, like well, we didn't pray in tongues one hour. Enough. Of course, praying in tongues is great. Uh well, uh, th- I was with a conference with this American lady, and she was coming to me, and uh, like she, what, th- th- I, uh, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. Like, um, okay, I'm trying to be polite as possible. Uh, sh- she's a bit weird. She's like, oh, and and she's like seeing demons everywhere, and say, like, oh yeah, it's like you're seeing, oh, I saw an angel and here and there, and and it's like, like, and she don't want people to touch her, you know, like to touch her, she get, she kind of like shift from her connection with God like don't touch me like, it's like that's weird right and so th- I mean I'm the other speaker so th- th- she came and talk to me during the break there and and, and she, you know and, and someone want to touch her and said no don't touch me okay. and she she looked at me and said you know what I mean right I, said, I, I look at her actually I don't know what you mean <laughs> I really don't know what you mean like I mean uh, like I really don't want to what you mean I I am not in this place where I am trying to get establish a connection with God. I understood that the connection is already established on the cross. Therefore, I'm not trying. I'm just trying to listen for what God is saying versus trying to get a connection like dial up like you remember right the 56k dial up like that 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 terrible dial up internet that we remember like so I always get disconnected it wasn't it, it, that you know remember that then disconnected do do then you try again right it is not there you are hardwired right in a place right you're not trying to dial to heaven heaven is in you you're not a dial modem though you are the internet itself you are <laughs> you are the fiber of the network yourself you, Christ is in you Christ is not in heaven somewhere else so therefore, that mindset and the mentality is changed. And to me, like uh, to me, like I mean, I'm next. I still pray for the sick. I still prophesy. I still tell them, like, you know, I see your house and what's happening and all the stuff. I still give word of knowledge. That like, it doesn't really matter to me how much effort I I take. Well, of course, praying in tongues is great, but to me, she's just weird. If the holiness of Jesus looks attractive to pre-believers, why does our holiness to Jesus kind of repulse believers? We, we, we need to rethink, you know? So I'm not really in this place where I am putting extra miles so that I can get connected with God. I know that I'm already connected through the cross, past tense, and based on that truth, I have, have access. So therefore, co- come boldly to the tro- throne of God in the time of need so that you can receive grace. So therefore, I can come boldly to the throne. I'm not trying to knock on the door. I'm not trying to impress God. I really I know that God is impressed because Christ is in me. And the best decision I ever made is to receive Jesus. And so through that decision, only by that decision, uh, God is already impressed with me. Therefore, because of that decision, I cannot even impress God more because it is more based on my works. It was the performance of Jesus, which is whole awesome and perfect. But so therefore, if Jesus is living in me, and he whatever I inherit, I inherited from him, so that I therefore I also inherited unlimited acceptance from God. You need to understand, a lot of times we talk about power and authority Jesus has given us. Uh, a lot of times we talk about uh, casting out demons, cancer levels, raise the dead. That's great. But what Jesus did on the cross was when we inherited, we not just only inherited the miraculous, we inherited the intimacy and that connection that Jesus has with God. 
when you understand that hearing the voice of God is not a problem. Hearing the voice of God can be a problem if you think that God is far away, He doesn't love me until I pray more. Do you know what? That truth is a self-defeating lie that you will, uh, if you think God is far away, God is far away. But the fact that you are here on earth and Christ is in you on earth and you are in Christ in heaven and you are at two places at one time. In one place, you are experiencing chaos, craziness, depression and all the stuff and all the bad news. In, in another place, it's righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So therefore, that's why there's a consistent struggle that as sons and daughters of God, we are facing all these things, all these bad news and all the stuff. But there is a position that you are, you are by location, you are seated in two different places. One place is righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. You are connected in that place to bring heaven down. It is not, it is not based on what you've done because you are in Christ in heaven. When God sees you, He sees His perfect son and daughter through Jesus Christ. And when you understand that, you no longer strive to do something for God, but do something with God. Isn't that what the new covenant is? It's not trying to do things for God, it's trying to do things with God because Christ is in you. <laughs> Man, that is, that is huge because the former do things for God was the mentality of the prodigal son. But the son cannot do anything except he sees the father do, Jesus says. And I am in him and he is in me. So therefore, if we are in Christ and Christ is in us, if Jesus says I am in him and he is in me, so we cannot do things for him, we can only do things with him. So if we can only do things with him, that proves my intimacy with him and how close I am with him. Therefore, I no longer struggle with an intimacy problem. I struggle with an awareness problem. Because it is not intimacy that is the problem, it's our awareness of how close he is to us. Yeah, there, there's a lot of things there. I don't know how much you can take, but there's a lot of things there. And we all are struggling. Because of self-defeating lies of the, product, uh, of, of the elder brother, it says, oh, I must, he must not be pleased with him because I don't, did, did, didn't do A, B, and C, and D. Uh, and... and and so that's and and so for some of us can't hear God because if, if you see the everything in the new covenant function by faith, yeah. If, if according to what you believe, it be done to you. Yeah, according to your faith, be done to you. If your faith believes that God is absent from you and far away from you, guess what? That's the rea that's the reality that you live in, but it's not the truth. Truth supersedes the reality. The word of God is not reality, it's truth. Yeah? They shall know the truth and the truth shall set them free. Yeah? The, the word of God is not reality. It is truth. But when you believe in the truth, the reality will change. Your whole reality will change. And, and we need that. We need to understand that. Yeah, especially in this season where everything is going to chaos, we far more need people to rise up as sons and daughters. That we need sons and daughters to understand that they are already in the promised land. That anticipation versus participation. Anticipation, waiting for the manna to come and all that stuff. Waiting for someone to visit me because I'm waiting for the pastor to visit me. Why so long? Five months already, never visit me. Why? Never, never call me. Man. Why? Why so long? Why? Why? Like, you know, waiting for someone to spoon feed me. Guess what? You, you, you know what? Uh, I think there are times that we need to shift into this place from anticipating something to happen or some pastoral or some, but to, to participate with what God has given us. And I sure do know that in this season, the true sons and daughters will, 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 will rise up. But the ones who still behave like a childish boy or girl when they are 20 or 30 years old Christians, it's not going to last. And, and we need to understand that what God wants to move through us, God, God wants to 
his power to move through us rather than just get demonstrating his power on us. Yeah, it, this is huge. So, uh, yeah, um, before I carry on anymore, uh, pass it to, well, Patrick? Yes, Patrick. Wow, that's a lot. That's, that's a lot. Like yeah, yeah. Yeah, participation, not anticipation. <laughs> well, um, Luke, Luke chapter 15 is where uh, the, the parable of the prodigal son is, is uh, situated. And actually, there are three parables there. There's, uh, there's a parable of the lost sheep, parable of the lost coins, and parable of the lost son. Mm. Uh, it's very interesting because a parable of the lost sheep, there's hundred sheep, a shepherd l loses one, and he finds he, he finds the lost one, and verse 7 it says, in the same way there's more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents over 99 righteous persons who needs no repentance. A parable of the lost coin, a uh, woman has 10 silver coins, and, and, and loses one coin, sweeps the entire house and finds it. And then when she finds it, she, she calls all her friends to celebrate. You know, you lose one coin, you, 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 you throw a party when you find it. And uh, verse 10, it says, In the same way, I tell you, there's more joy in the presence of, of uh, the angels of God over one sinner who repents. And then you have parable of lost son. So hundred, hundred sheep lose one, found lost sheep. Ten silver coins lose one, found lost coin. The parable is two sons lost one. But this time, instead of the father finding the son, is the the son came back to the father. So there's a difference. There's a shift here. Uh, so the different thing is, you, you can see that the number decreasing from 100 to 10 to 2. Right? That's the first difference. The second difference is the, f uh, the first two parables uh, uh, the first, the first two parables is, is the shepherd and the woman who actively went to find the coin uh, and, and the sheep, right? But, but in the last parable, it's the son who came back, but the father waited. The father waited for the son to come back. Right? And then you see in the first two parables, both in verse 7 and verse 10, it, it says, oh, in the same way, there's more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents. But in the last parable, it says in verse 32, it, uh, when, when Jesus talked about this, uh, when Jesus uh, uh, narrated the parable, he didn't end with, in the same way in heaven, uh, all the angels rejoice. But he, he, he tweaked it, and it was in verse 32, with, with the father saying to the elder son. Uh, and in verse 32, it says, but we had to celebrate and rejoice. For this brother of yours was dead and has begun to live and was lost and has been found. So this is a very interesting way of ending the three parables. Uh, so through all three parables, there's similarity, but there, there's a slight tweak in how uh, Jesus pre uh, presented the third parable, and it was also the longest parable. Right? The first two were just basically introductions to the third parable. And why, why, why he ended with verse 32, but we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours is found and has begun to live and was lost and has been found. 
he ended with this is because the audience that he was speaking to was really having the elder brother syndrome. Who, who was he speaking to? The answer is found in uh, verse 1 and 2 of chapter 15. It says, all the tax collectors and the sinners were coming near him to listen to him. And verse 2, both the Pharisees and scribes began to grumble, saying, this man receives sinners and eats with them. So there are two classes of people here. Verse 1, the tax collectors and sinners. These are, these are the prodigal sons. And verse 2, the Pharisees and the scribes who started grumbling about Jesus hanging out with, with uh, the tax collectors and sinners. These Pharisees and scribes, these are the elder brothers. And, and so when Jesus, Jesus saw or he sensed the, 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 the Pharisees and scribes grumbling about him, hanging out with the tax collectors and sinners, he began to tell uh, these three parables. Who was his audience? Who was he targeting the parable to? There were tax collectors and sinners. There were Pharisees and scribes. He was talking to all of them. But he was really targeting at the Pharisees and the scribes. He was really trying to get the attention and trying to tell them, can you see, can you see that, that the angels who are, are celebrating over the, the tax collectors and the sinners when they repent? Can you see, can you see? Can you, can you feel the Father's heart that, that He is so, he, he, is, he, he, is, he is so passionate about His, his Son coming back to Him? And, and so when Jesus described the elder son being upset about, about the father celebrating the younger son, who was he talking about? He was, he was telling the Pharisees and the scribes. And you see, we grew up in church thinking, oh, the Pharisees and the scribes, they are evil people. They are, peop you know, they, they are the ones who, who, who really betrayed Jesus. They, they are the ones who were against Jesus all the times. You know, they, they are evil. They are bad. They are evil. They are bad. That's what we, that's, I, I don't know. You, at least when, when I was brought up in church, that, that was what I was taught. Or that's the, the kind of impression we get, right? But really in that time, who, the, who were the ones who were really zealous ab about abiding to the law of God, who really, who, who really read the word of God, who were teachers of, of God's word? It was the Pharisees and the scribes. And how it ended up that way was really when it's the whole history of how when when Israel and later Ju when Judah you know, fell away and 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 and, and, and they were they, they were destroyed by by uh, Babylon they were captured and 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 and, and how they they were. <laughs> They were captives in, in, in a foreign nation. How, the, how they began to, to see that, oh, we, 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 have, we have been so, uh, we, we, have, we, we, we are in this state because, you know, we didn't obey the law. 
So it became this reflex action of the of the entire uh, Jewish uh, uh, Jew, Jewish race over generations that we need to obey the law. We need to be serious about the law. It is from this knee-jerk reaction of pain, of experiencing generational suffering, generational trauma, that we need to obey the law. Uh, 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 we, we need to get serious with the 613 laws in the Torah. We need to get serious with it, and they got very serious with it. But it's in that entire process that they, they got serious with God's law, but they totally missed out God's heart. And so we are not talk so when Jesus talked to, to this group of people, this group of people were, were people who were really, really serious about God. And, and the thing is, in the modern church, you know, a lot of us are very, very serious about. God, and we take God's word seriously and we do our best to, to obey God's word the best way we know how. But somehow, along the way, somehow, we, miss, we missed out his heart. We, we, we just miss it. And I, 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 I missed out his heart in, 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 in many ways, in, in many scenarios. And, and so it's, it's this en- entire process that, you know, how, how, how can I, how can I capture God's heart? I remember like 15 years ago, you know, when I was uh, uh, f- fresh out of, was I fresh? 15 years ago, f- uh, f- 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 when I was fresh out of Bible college, that would be uh, 2005. All right. Wow. Is, that, is that 15 years ago? Yeah. Yeah, that's about there, right? Almost 16. Yeah, 16. Yeah. Yeah. About my guess. Ab- ab- about there, yeah. Yeah. Fresh out. Yeah. So, even before I, I went to Bible college, you know, when I first got in, you know, so, so more than 15 years ago, so, so I was, you know, I was doing so many things for God, all right? Um, but I was struggling because I had kept having this these thoughts, God, I'm doing so much for you, but what do I get in return? And I look to my right, I look to my left. I look at my two best friends. They were married, they had children. At that time, I'm to- not talking about now, I'm talking about like 15, 18 years ago. They were married, they had children, uh, they, they, yeah, they were making good money, had the, running their own businesses, uh, or and 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 being able to afford to to buy their their own houses, and 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 I was asking God these questions. God, I'm doing more than all my peers in terms of the kingdom. What am I getting in return? And I remember during during uh, that 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 season, uh, especially after I graduated from Bible college, uh, that God kept. <laughs> saying to me 
he kept telling me, you can never outgive me. He kept, he kept re- re- reminding me, no matter how much you give, you can never outgive me. And and, and so I, I I had to repent of my my elder brother syndrome. I had to repent from from that comparing that that looking at other people and say, "Look, you f- you killed the fattened calf of him. What have you done for me?" Look, I, st- I slogged so hard for you, God. What have I gotten in return? And I know many of us are, are in, 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 in situations um, in, in this season where, where life is not easy. Life is challenging. We're wondering how how are we going to uh, how are we going to have our, our our material needs, our financial needs met uh, continually in the in, 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 in the coming months in the in the coming year, and we're asking God questions. And. Yeah. And 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 the message is still the same. You know, that that God is saying no matter how much you give you can never outgive me. I will always outgive you. And so I, 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 so this is an ongoing process for me to check my own heart. Where is my heart at? Because I find my heart many times, it can go either way. You know, it's, it's, we, we are many times. <laughs> it's just you know either this or that you know it's either uh it just you go just go one extreme or you know either just work so hard to gain God's approval or just give up and just just go the other way And many times, because we give up hope on ourselves, and we when we try to have hope, we are working for it with our own effort. And both both ways, <laughs> both ways are not God's way, and. Yeah, and, and so it's asking the hard questions. It's really hard asking hard questions. God, where is my heart at? And God, what is your heart for me? Clement? Wow. Well, there, there is a lot being shared by um, Jeff and Patrick. <laughs> I feel that we're going really, really deep into this. I, I, I just want to kind of like, bring both points, you know, uh, kind of talk about what, what Jeff left off and where Patrick left off. I feel that one, one of the things that um, we can never fully comprehend or we're on this journey to fully comprehend is actually His grace. It's actually God's grace. You know, like Jeff was talking about, you know, like, a, a, like any supernatural things that we ever do for God is really through His grace. So we need to know grace. Grace has two two meaning. All right, I, uh, one is 
most of us would, would know, like grace is his unmerited favor of God, right? We, we cannot marry it, which means we cannot work for it. We cannot perform for it. It is a gift, you know? It's a gift. So the only way to, 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 re- to, to, to get a gift is to receive it. So you cannot work for a gift. It's like, it, like for example, you know, when you, when you, uh, Christmas come, you know, when you give Christmas present, right? It's a gift, right? You, you don't tell people like, hey, uh, Merry Christmas, here's a gift, but first you do 10 push up, then I give it to you. <laughs> you know, I don't want to ask that, you know? Like, like, it, do that for him. Uh, do that, huh? You want to do that for, okay. Okay, maybe we can do that. For the fun of it. <laughs> you know? But you see, like in Christmas, it's a spirit of giving and we are blessing people through grace, right? It's not like, people earn anything but it is by grace you want to bless them and, and you receive that present you know you cannot work for it you don't you don't have to work for it you know so I think what I want to want to want to I feel even for me I, I'm still trying to understand what like, like fully grubs grace what grace is like theologically we can fully understand what grace is but when we walk it out you know that's another thing so grace on one is like the unmerited favor of God and the other one is actually the operational power of God when you receive grace, you get to do what you couldn't do before. You receive grace. You know, maybe you, maybe when we talk about praying for impartation, we're releasing grace. So through that, you you, you it's like jump start an engine. You suddenly can do something you never could do before. So, so that is grace. You know, and and what Patrick said, the elder brother uh, was not happy that the father celebrated because he could not fully comprehend that grace. He couldn't comprehend that grace, and and. I I want to share some scriptures. You know, like okay, let's let's go to Colossians three thirteen. Colossians three thirteen says, "Bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgive you, so you also must do. So Christ forgive you, so you also must do. All right, kind of track track with me with that. Ephesians four thirty two. Be kind to one another. Isn't it interesting? Colossians talk about bearing with one another. Now this one talk about kind to one another. All right? And, and tender-hearted, forgiving one another even as God in Christ forgive you. All right? So Colossians talk about this. All right? Because Christ forgive you, you're also going to do the same. Ephesians talk about, you know, as, if, you know, as God forgive you, you're also going to forgive them. All right? And then, of course, right, when we know the Lord's Prayer, right, the Lord's Prayer says, like, forgive us our sin, you know, as we forgive those who sin against us. All right, I'm going to end off with this verse, uh, Luke 11, 4. All right, it is about, you know, that woman that, that, uh, that, uh, w- uh, that wept at Jesus' feet and used her hair to wipe it. And, and Jesus said this, uh, Luke 7, 47. Therefore, I say to you, her sins which are many are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. All right, because Jesus said this parable, right? Some someone like uh, uh, got two people owe money, you know, one owe five hundred, one owe hundred, you know, and and who will love more? Of course, the one that that you know the debt cancer is more. And Jesus is trying to prove a point, you know, those who are forgiven much will love much. And I feel that in in our journey, it's very important that we start to give thanks for the forgiveness that we receive from God. We are all, we are all sinners, right? We are all done, you know? For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We all have sinned. And, and it's not about here to keep a checklist like, oh, wow, I only sinned 52 things. That person got 82 things. <laughs> it's not about comparing, but, but we need to take account, a personal account and personal thankfulness towards God like because of God's grace and God's forgiveness towards us so we extend the same grace and the same forgiveness. That is very important because sometimes we forget and I want to go back to this uh, earlier on thing that Patrick was talking about. You know, someone who got saved, you know, their life got changed and suddenly the next moment they start to judge other people. They become the elder brother. Because they forgot, they were also once living a lavish, decadent or, you know, willful lifestyle 
and because they receive the abundance of grace, which is a gift, and they forgot that, and they start to so-called judge people and somehow move into a Pharisee's mindset. Because I've done this, I've done that. You know, I'm better. So, so we need to know, like, God don't just love us, you know. God also loves those who are not repentant yet. So that's the thing we need to understand, you know. So, so w- I feel that, you know, it's very important we take into account of how much grace we have received and how much we have been forgiven because when we rem- are reminded and remember that, we will show and extend more grace to other people. We won't be like, wow, why this person, God bless this person with a car. Ah, I wait so long, pray so long, no car. I got to use the public transport. <laughs> you know, like, like we, we start to compare, we start to think, but yeah, we forgot like, wow, you know, this brother really has been through a lot. This brother also like me, you know, has been forgiven much. And we, we need to remember as we have forgiven much, as we receive the abundance of grace, we release the same level of forgiveness and the abundance of grace. Because when, when, when we really appreciate really the depth, you know, and, 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 and the abundance, that, the grace that we get to receive from God, we, we will actually show grace to other people. You know, we will really celebrate people. We, we, we won't be like this elder brother that get really upset. Why did God bless a person? Why did a person have such a good life? You know, like, like when I first got saved, I, I asked such questions. I said, like, hey, how come this person, you know, God, how come this person not saved? But wow, the life so much good, so good. Has everything provided for, really enjoying life, all this thing, you know? And I'm thinking like, wow. You know, I, I, so I can relate with Patrick, you know? Patrick was, Patrick was talking about his experience of like, you know, how... You know, his peers really have certain uh, established career or, or assets, you know, and why, why, why don't I? And the same thing, you know, I'm like, wow, God, you know, like, you know, we always t- tend to think that we sacrifice a lot for God, right? Wow, God, I sacrificed for you five years in US, living by faith. Like, wow, how come my life still like this? How come my friend like that, you know? And, and we start to compare, you know? And I think it's, it's, it's very important that we we focus on our journey. We focus on our journey. We focus on our calling. You know? And and when because you see, when we start to focus on other people's race, other people's journey, what happens is we take our eyes off what God has given us, which is His grace, His blessing. We take our eyes off what God has blessed us and we put our eyes focusing on what God has blessed other people. And the truth is this, the grass always looks greener on the other side. The grass always looks greener, it smells fresher on the other side. Until we get there, we're like, oh, actually it's not that green. You know? And, and so my, my point is this, we, 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 let's keep our eyes not just focused on Jesus, but also focus on the grace and the forgiveness that's been dispensed towards our life, the blessing that we have received. Count our blessing. Give thanks for every blessing and every breakthrough we have. Because if we don't, means we are focusing on someone else's blessing, someone else's breakthrough, someone else's life. You need to know we are not living someone else's life. We're going to live our life. We are not fulfilling someone else's destiny. We're going to fulfill our destiny. So we better keep our eyes focused on what God has already blessed us with. If not, we will start to cover someone else's blessing, someone else's breakthrough, someone else's calling or someone else's life. And that will lead us to back to the elder brother symptoms. That why did our father give this person the suckling pig? I don't have the suckling pig. I don't even have a pig trotter. <laughs> but my fellow brother or sister has a suckling pig. Why? Why? Because we, our eyes has left what we've been blessed with and our eyes start to focus what other people have. You know, um, one thing I always talk about is this, Thanksgiving is so powerful. When Jesus fed the multitudes, one thing he does is this, he took the litter that was in his hands, the bread and the fish, and he did not despise the resources that was in his hands, but instead, he, he looked up to heaven, he gave thanks, and then he break it, and a miracle happened. 
So two things happen. He looked up to heaven and he gave thanks. So my question for everyone tonight is, what are you looking up to? Are you looking up to heaven and giving thanks with what God has placed in your hands and He will multiply it? Or are you looking at someone else's resources, some, someone else's hands, and we're like, wow, that looks better. I got five loaves and two fish, but Patrick has seven loaves and four fish. And I want that seven loaves and four fish. And you start to despise what God has given you, not knowing that God can multiply what is in your hands. That we forget that God might give you a seed, but that seed could be a seed of an acorn tree that when you plant, it'll be huge. Because sometimes the thing that we want from that we want from God or the breakthrough we want to see, it comes in the size of a seed. And we start to despise the seed. We start to despise what was given into our hands because we start to see what is in other people's hands. So I just, just really want to encourage, let's, let's be like Jesus, like what He did when He multiplied the loaf and the fishes, that we keep our eyes towards heaven and we carry this posture of thanksgiving and miracles, multiplication, breakthrough will start to happen in your life. Stop focusing on what my brother on my left has. Stop focusing on what my sister on my right has. Start focusing on what that little have. Because God said, do not despise small beginnings. Even maybe Patrick has five fruits, Jeff has ten fruits and only have one seed. But I'm going to despise that one seed because my seed when plant will bear many more fruits. So let's, let, let's just really focus on what has been given to us. The, His grace. The forgiveness that's extend towards us. The things He has entrusted us to put in our hands. That we will not only give thanks, but because of our posture, our attitude, things are to break, break down. Things are to multiply. Amen. Amen. You may have only one seat, but it is Mao Shang one seat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Man. All right. Uh, now, I'm going to kind of add this into it. Um, uh, and it's also. Um, now, this verse is usually quoted because we are collecting offering. But actually, it's really not about giving. Neither is it about collecting offering, tithe, etc. Uh, and I'm sure if you attended church two years, you have seen someone mention this verse prior to collecting offering, which if you have heard that, they all have quoted it wrongly. Uh, which is Galatians 6. Uh, which usually they will quote, do not be deceived, uh, Galatians chapter 6 verse 7, do not be deceived, God cannot be mocked. A man reads what he sows, whoever sows to please, uh, uh, to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction, whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. So, uh, and full stop, and then, and usually then you will continue the offering, you see that. And they will say, oh, see, don't, don't mock God. God knows how much you have, so you better give uh, responsibly. Yeah, you better. Uh, but, 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 uh, may I suggest to you that to understand the whole book of Galatians is Paul talking to the, uh, the, the, the church, and uh, there were people, there were, there were, well-informed Jew that, I mean, now all the Gentiles are getting saved. It's like, man, they are like getting filled with the Spirit faster than us, better than, like, it's like they are receiving the grace of God. And they are sick and they can't stand the freedom that they have. They really couldn't. And so, uh, in, in the book of Galatians, it was seen that Paul is addressing some Jews went in to kind of add a bit more into the grace teaching that the salvation was freely received by grace through faith. And, and, and they went back and says, you know what, that's great. I praise God for, for you Gentiles that you received the grace of God. Uh, but you know what, you need to do a bit more for God to please you, which is they really try to reintroduce circumcision to the Galatian church. 
yeah, Galatea Church. And, and, uh, and Paul, <laughs> stayed first bec- almost the first statement was, Foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you? Uh, the word will be mesmerized, put a spell on. Yeah? That, you know what? You receive by grace, you want to kind of receive by law. And so, and Paul was addressing these guys, and he said this thing. I didn't say it. Paul says, I wish they would emasculate themselves. It means they, they like to cut so much, they cut the whole thing off. I didn't say it. Paul said it. Yeah? <laughs> he was really, really angry. Uh, and and then, um, and you need to, that, that's in chapter 5, yeah? And he was talking about circumcision. No, you don't need to circumcise anymore. You're in a new covenant. It's a circumcision of the heart, not of the flesh. And then, uh, in verse chapter 6, you, you, you will see that, uh, in verse 12, it says, they, those who want to impress people by means of the flesh trying to compare with the circumcised. The only reason is this to avo- is to avoid the persecution of Christ, uh, persecution for the cross of Christ. So not even those who are circumcised keep the law. And they want you to circumcise and so that they may boast about your circumcision in the flesh. Uh, and so and, and and Paul says in verse 14, May I never boast except by the cross of Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, that 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 though through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world, neither circumcision or uncircumcision means anything. What counts is the new creation, peace and mercy for those who follow this rule to the is- Israel of God. So we can see that after uh, Paul says the mockery verse, he c- went back into circumcision. So, chapter 7 is actually talking about, the mockery there, right, is actually talking about uh, not money, but circumcision. It's very, very clear. There is not a single mention of a money, silver, or gold, or denarius there. There is no financial mention there. There is nothing about finance there. So, why is God mocked? Uh, I use this example a lot. Like, for example, Patrick's my son, and uh, I say, well, what are doing his birthday? On November 11, okay, he remember the date. Guys, remember the date? 1111. Don't go and buy 40. But 1111, that's his birthday. Remember the date. Yeah? Uh, yeah, so, uh, and on 1111, I decided to buy him a Ferrari with a license plate. P-T-L, Patrick Low. Yeah. Praise the Lord also, right? PTL, Patrick Lord. Yeah, praise the Lord. PTL 1111. I, I gave it to him. I said, Patrick, this is your birthday gift, you know. But I realize you don't have a driving license. And, you know, uh, the last time you drive, you bump into a pillar. So uh, go and p- do your driving license, but don't drive illegally. Do you understand? Yes? Understand? Yeah? So, I mean, the car was given to him. The car was given to him. But he needed to pass his driving license. But somehow Patrick really feels bad. He feels bad that he's expensive. He feels bad that he really don't deserve this, though. He really don't. Like the car is so expensive, you know. Like uh, it's like PTL one 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 nice license plate, you know. What's cost a bomb? And he feels this inadequacy, and he don't feel like he deserves such a lavish gift that he decided to work in McDonald's. Uh, without my knowing, he worked in McDonald's. For two, three years, you know, make McDonald's, then get a double job, yeah, play cryptocurrency or something, and then got some money, and, and he managed to save out like $111,000. And so three years later, I hate me, he passed his license. Three years later, he came to me and says, Dad, this is $111,000. I said, from what? He says, uh, yeah, that's because you gave me the, the Ferrari. I don't really don't feel good. I really I want to work for it. And so now I can really drive it. So I look at it. It's a gift. Oh, it's already yours three years ago. But I look at the hundred and eleven thousand dollars. That's a mockery to me. You don't think that I'm that good to you. So to me, right, that hundred eleven thousand dollars is a mockery to the goodness of God. That you think that you can earn that Ferrari. And you think that I'm not good enough, that I don't love you enough to give it to you. So that three years of work is a mockery to me. That $111,000 is a mockery to me. 
that is what Galatians is talking about. It's not about giving. It's about coming to God in the spirit of law. <laughs> we went to a meeting recently. The spirit of the law. <laughs> yeah, the spirit of the law. And we had a special appearance from Mr. Brown or something. Like that. Spirit of the law, you know. Like and and so uh, and and yeah. So that is actually what it's talking about. For all of us, we are still something flowing in the spirit of the law. And not knowing and realizing that our works actually is a mockery to the cross of Jesus Christ. <laughs> that should shock you all and make you all happy for this moment. Because when I say that verse, some of you are thinking like, are we collecting offering? It's not. It's really talking about law and grace. It's really talking about the elder brother syndrome here. Working hard enough to receive grace. Yeah, so... Uh, back to you guys. I think. Wow, that's uh, I, th I think we can slowly wrap it up. Yeah, yeah. I think we can slowly wrap it up. Like, for those of you who are in the performance mentality right now, I need you to l like mentally lower your expectance, your 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 ability to perform, because really, God doesn't want you to perform. God wants you to receive. God don't want you to be, be a performer. He wants you to be a receiver. And when you're, and you're a receiver, you naturally become a performance. Your performance will go up when you receive much. The same way that, a, that a car receives its fuel, it will perform. And, and, and that, that, that's, that we can't work for the Palari. We can't work for the grace of God. So we, I want all of you to lay down all your work. They say, ah, oh, God is pleased with me. Oh my gosh, God is so pleased with me. I can't believe it. I can't believe it that, that He is pleased without me doing anything. That's exactly right. The, uh, the only thing that you did is receive Jesus. And that itself is enough. So sink in. Let it sink in for the 60 of you that, 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 is, that is watching. This is, this is so essential. This is so essential. Sink in. Let it sink in and, and let all... Uh, works is salvation by grace and never salvation by works. Let all, let all uh, us all receive in the name of Jesus. What is like to be God, God to be madly in love with us without us being madly in love with Him first. Yeah, He lo first loved us before we love Him. And this relationship is never about you trying to love God. It's Him loving you first. So receive first. In Jesus' name. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. Amen. Amen. Anything Amen. else you want to add, Patrick? The other call it is one like that's it. Yeah, I I, I thought of Cain and Abel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I thought about how Cain was so upset when he saw Abel's um offering was accepted. was accepted and his wa he his was not uh, yeah and and yeah and the whole problem was he, he, he kept looking at Abel Cain kept looking at Abel and he was comparing and that was one big problem um, and a lot of times we feel that God loves <laughs> God loves someone else more than than me. Yeah, God favors someone else more than me. God loves someone else more than me. Yeah. And yeah. And and. And and so it's really about keeping your eyes on God, and and realizing His eyes is on you instead of keeping your eyes on 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 someone else. But when you realize that His eyes is on you, then it becomes so easy to love other people. Wow. It becomes so easy to appreciate other people. 
Um, yeah. And it's hard to appreciate other people because deep down inside, we don't feel appreciated. Deep down inside, we are fighting for appreciation. We are fighting for attention. We are fighting for affection. And, and we are working for all that. And, and so, yeah. uh, and, and so, if if we were to just keep, you know, if 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 we to just keep our relationship, you know, between me and God. then when we look at other people, things will be very, very different. All right. Well, I mean, that's a very good uh, um, story in the Bible, Cain and Abel. You know, I feel like one of the key team that, uh, that, that we keep um, talking or focusing is actually comparison. You know, how the elder brother starts to compare, how Cain and Abel, there's comparison, you know. And I feel that one, one of the reasons why people compare is that we don't believe that God has the best for you. We don't believe that God has the best for you. Because when we start to believe that God really has the best for me, then what is in my hands is God's best really. And I feel that if, if we can just come to this agreement and trust that whatever that I have from God is the best, then I won't be you know, having my eyes focusing on what God is blessing other people. You know, I mean, I think we all know that God is good, but do we believe that He is better than who we think He is? He is better than our comprehension. He is better than our definition of God is good. And I feel that it's important that when we start to really believe, because I feel that some of us, you know, we might have this lie that God is good. He, he is good. But sometimes I feel that he, he, His goodness is, is better in other people than my life. <laughs> you know, we start to compare this way. We start, maybe we start to compare favor. You know, but we know favor is never for the person. Favor is to serve people. Favor is for the kingdom of God, which also means sometimes we start to compare favor um, without very good good grounds. You know, so for example, you know, uh, maybe I have a friend who is called to um, government. You know, call to government. And he will probably walk in the favor of Christ and will manifest in such a way like he will maybe meet minister. Minister from other countries, politician from other countries who want to meet up with him. And I cannot compare like, hey, how come he got, you know, connections of favor with politician, foreign minister, etc. that wants to connect with him, that wants to bring him up for a meal, but I don't have. All I have is small, um, it, it's, it's, some, some random people will come up and just say hi to me. <laughs> you know? Then, then we start to compare this way. And what we're comparing is actually not, 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 not 
favor, you know, what we're comparing is sphere, sphere of influence because the different sphere of influence are called to the favor will manifest differently. And because of that, we start to think that maybe God has better plans. God's goodness is better. God's best is better elsewhere than in my own hands, in my own life. Because we start to compare, you see? And a lot of times, some, the, the comparison we have are, are actually quite... Sometimes it doesn't make sense if you really ask God, how come he has this, I have this? How come he has Mao Shang Wan? I only have D24. No, we start to compare, you know. How come he has a Tesla? I only got a Toyota. <laughs> you know, like comparison knows no ends, you know. But if we really come to that place that, wow, you know, God really has the best for me. Which means what I have, he has the best intention. He has the best intention. And God always work all things for good. Which means that if my situation is not so it's not good yet, it's gonna get better. It's gonna get better. You know, so I just wanna really just encourage people, you know, like God is really good. He's not just good towards you, he's good to the people around, and most importantly, he has the best in mind for you and he has the best things lined up for your life. So if we really just, you know, set our eyes on what we have, that will keep us on a path of not comparing. Yeah. So any anything you guys want to add? If not, we can uh, slowly wrap it up. Just do an announcement. Yeah. All right, let's go. To, anyway, you know, um, Jeff, did an offering message. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to jump straight into, into collecting our offering and tithe first. All right. Anyway, you know, we're just going to wrap it up uh, our, our, our session of uh, teaching and sharing. You know, I think there's a lot to digest. There's really a lot. You know, like even when I'm listening to Jeff and Patrick, I was like, wow, that's, even for me, I'm also like processing, learning, and it's just really a lot of uh, good revelation and content out there. So we're going to take our time to rewatch this. But we do want to wrap it up right now and we want to um, go uh, come to a time to collect our tithes and offering. So for those of you who are part of Socability Church and you would like to give your tithe towards the church, you may do so with this three contactless payment. Number one, through the QR code where you can use your internet banking app. Number two, you can write a check to Socability. And number three, you can give through PayPal. Really, uh, this is especially for those who are overseas. But I'd like to emphasize for those of you, you know, uh, if your home church is not so completely church, we do ask you to keep your tie to your local church. But if you'd like to sow above and beyond what we're doing here, you've been blessed by tonight's message, you've been blessed by our ministry, you know, feel free to do so. We'd be really blessed and honored to receive them as well. All right. So I'm going to get uh, Pastor Patrick to pray for tonight's offering. So Pastor Patrick. Mm. Father God, we thank you that, that you are just so good and we can never outgive you. You always outgive us. And so as 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 we just give to you, Lord Lord, we give knowing that you you first gave. We love knowing that you first love. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. So we do have some uh, exciting announcement that's coming up right now. Uh, for the first one, we're gonna continue our song living room. All right, in our new living room. But you know. We might have a new setup, but we have the same timing. We have the same great revelation and spirit that is releasing and unveiling us deeper into the Word. You know, so next Wednesday at seven thirty p.m. on Facebook Live, we're going to continue with our song living room, and this one we're on this topic of living out sonship. All right. So like like Jeff said, Patrick said, even I said, this is such a big topic. I feel like even after today's session, I'm just thinking like, there is still so much we have not touched on. There's still so much we can dwell deeper into, all right? And our, our heart is that through this session, you know, all of you can uh, not only grow in revelation, but understanding of your identity, that you'll be so rooted that no matter things, no matter what things may come your way, you know that you're a son and you're a daughter and nothing can uproot you from daddy God's hand. Nothing can uproot you from your identity in Christ and your inheritance in Christ. Amen. So next Wednesday, 7.30 p.m., Facebook Live, Soak Living Room, we are going to continue on living out sonship. All right. So next announcement, um, this Sunday, all right, this Sunday, we are actually uh, going to open up uh, and uh, to our on-site service. 
all right, there have been some uh, changes to the government uh, COVID-19 regulation. So uh, we, we are able to, you know, uh, open up our services again you know, with some changes. All right. So for those of you who like to, you know, uh, so for those of you who are in Singapore, all right, <laughs> that was like, for those of you who are in Singapore, living in Singapore, and you'd like to uh, visit uh, Sokolbili Church on site to join us for uh, worship, to join us for a time of receiving God's word and ministry, you may do so. All right. We are, uh, our church starts at 10 a.m., you know, and that's where our Facebook Live goes live to. So, uh, for those of you who would like to, you know, join us to worship us on site, um, you know, there will be a link, an Eventbrite link that will be posted up, and you can click on a link and you can uh, register for yourself. So here are some really uh, important announcements. One ticket is only for one person, all right? So if, if you have, you know, maybe you're bringing your spouse, you need two tickets. Number two, you cannot apply the ticket for someone else. You only can apply the tickets for yourself or your immediate family member. So I cannot be like, wow, Patrick is my good friend. I just want to apply for him. No, 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 cannot. You know, there are strict rules that we need for contact tracing. So you cannot apply for a friend. I'm so sorry, all right? But you can share the link that we post up to the friend and they can apply. That's, 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 uh, that is legal, all right? That's, that, that's something you can do, all right? So I want to emphasize you only can apply for yourself, all right? And number three, because of a new uh, regulation, okay? Uh, if you have a kid, you know, we have no more space for a kid anymore. All right, but so so the tickets that are released are actually only for adults. All right, so I do want to really emphasize on that because if you uh because we already max out our occupancy rate for for children, so if you you know uh, bring a kid, we actually need to turn you away. All right, or at least turn your child, which means actually for you, you know, I don't think you will let your kids go home by yourself. All right, and you stay for a service, but I I, I do want to uh, emphasize on that. You know, uh, our occupancy um for kids to be in a church service because of the COVID-19 regulation is already maxed out, all right? So the tickets they're releasing is only for adults, all right? So so please do take note of that. Uh, it's actually even also very challenging for us to work around the new regulation. So we do seek everyone kind understanding. And of course, uh, for those of you asking, you know, our, our service is open you now for uh, either, whether you're vaccinated or not vaccinated, uh, you can apply for tickets and come for the service, all right? So uh, that this will be uh, this Sunday, all right, and the link will be put up uh, soon, all right, and then I'm gonna pass to Pastor Patrick because Pastor Patrick is sharing uh, this Sunday message, all right. He is continuing, you know, kind of where I left off uh, last week. So you've been blessed, you know, and you've been inspired by what I shared last week. Uh, I believe Pastor Patrick will take it up to the next level. He will take up a notch. And there will be revelation bombs dropping. There will be eyes opening, spiritual skills dropping. <laughs> All right. Anyway, I'm about to ask Patrick to share what's on his heart for this Sunday. Yeah, yeah so, um, well, this Sunday, the sermon title, title is uh, Shaping Your World with Your Words. And um, last Sunday, uh, Pastor Clement did such an amazing job. Right, uh, covered so much ground uh, biblically. I think that was a very, very solid foundation. Wow, thank uh, you, Patrick. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, so I, I'm just going to pick up from, from, from where uh, Clement left off, if, even as, uh, as you talked about uh, how, how God shaped, shaped the world, Hebrews 11, 11 3, and, and how that is uh, narrated in Genesis chapter 1, right? That really we, you and I, we are created in His image and His, and his likeness. And uh, the Creator has created us as creation, but we are the epitome of His creation. We are the pinnacle of His creation. And we carry his creative power and 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 so part part of uh part of that of us being created in his image 
is that we carry its creative power. And, and just as a creator uh, shapes the world, the earth, with his word, that we carry that creative power to shape our world with our words. And so we, we're going to dive in to that uh, this Sunday. Yeah? Uh, car- carrying and releasing the creative power of God, His Word in our hearts and releasing His Word to our mouths. Awesome. Wow. Wow. If that doesn't stir your heart, if that doesn't excite you, I don't know what else would. What a great, sh- what a great sneak peek! I really love what you talk about. You know, making the image and likeness of God. That's definitely something I haven't talked about. <laughs> All right. So hey, do join us. It's gonna be a really powerful time of uh, the Word of God. I really love how you know Pastor Patrick always really go deep, expound and expose it. You know the scriptures. All right. So anyway, we're going to move on to the next announcement. We are uh, going to start our Sokobili School of Healing. All right. So if this is something they're interested in, you know, please do sign up. We are going to train people to move uh, in healing and to see people, you know, the blind see, the, uh, the deaf hear, the lame walk. We're, this is kind of our heart to train people to move in that. I want to pass to Pastor Jeff to uh, share more uh, about that. So uh, Jeff. Yep. Uh, Healing is really one of those things that are, uh, I mean, uh, I talk about it, we, 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 we preach prosperity in the time of poverty, we, we talk righteousness in the time of unrighteousness, we preach healing in the time when there's sickness, and uh, and that's what we really want to do, like, uh, in, in the Soak DNA, miraculous signs and wonders, especially healing is part of our inheritance, and, and uh, I really want you guys to get it also so uh we're gonna go through very practical lessons uh a lot of probably very crazy testimonies and it's going to be very different from your typical healing kind of uh training so uh i mean for we we i mean before this covid thing i mean we we do healing in the streets, and one of the places that we have done healing in, we see about I mean, what 30, 40, over thousand healings, and these are on pre-Christians. So, and there's something about us that what we believe that we started to see healing that easy. So we want to bring out to the masses, and do really do encourage you to join us. Yeah. So, uh, the details will be up soon. So. Sunday, yeah. Sunday. The details, more details will be up Sunday, so do kind of take a look out at it. Uh, uh, so uh, it will be all on websites also. So we'll give you more details. So get yourself ready for the Saturdays on in the next month because uh, yeah, keep yourself free. Uh, so we're gonna kind of like uh, impart to everyone. Yeah. God bless you. All right. I think that's all for the announcement for uh, tonight. All right. And thank you so much, all of you who are watching online. We hope you've been blessed by tonight's session. We mm-hmm. hope uh, you are excited and looking forward to our Sunday service. It's going to be another great time together in the presence of God and into His Word and fellowshipping together, either online or on-site. All right. So with that, we're going to wrap up our, our uh, tonight's session already. Uh, Jeff and Patrick, any last thing you'd like to share with our online audience before we go, uh, go offline? Nope. No, uh, I'm good. We're yeah. fine. We're good. All right. Anyway, um, you know, I just want to say a quick prayer, you know, for everyone before we end off. Father, we just thank you for tonight's session. We just thank you that you are really good. Mm. You are so, so, so good. You are our good, good Father. And Father, I just pray that you will help us see your goodness in new lenses and in new perspective. That your goodness will fill our hearts and every areas of our life. I just want to release that right now as, as, we, deep, uh, as we come to an end. I just pray that Holy Spirit, you open our eyes to see mm. the goodness of the Father, to understand the grace of the Father, and most importantly, to capture the heartbeat of the Father. Amen. I just want to release that over everyone right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Awesome. Hey, thank you so much for joining us in Song Living Room. And we hope uh, you have a great time in our living room. And we'll see you uh, on Sunday, all right, at 10 a.m. for our Sunday service. Bless you all. Have a great night. And for those of you who are watching overseas, have a great day ahead. Good night. Bless Goodbye. You. Bye.